voice, mood, understanding, condition, objective, and preposition. So ask yourself, what is the subject forced to do? What is implied in the act? And what is its objective and conditional desire? When asked to identify, point out, classify, categorize, or locate specific traits to make meaning and sense when asked to identify this subject, this act, and its implication of a sentence, story, or poem. We learn a very important function of structure that words are subjected to act out a condition either stated or implied. The subject is the discussion. It is a conversation about anything absolute the act, the verb, subjects the conversation or the discussion into action. The function of action is to imply a conditional objective. Instruction subjects to think about technology, education, people, emotions, acts to think about laughing, crying, feeling, implying, joking, and implications to think about, reactionary, enthralling, maddening, and perplexing. As an example, the printing press was a revolutionary idea. It is implied the subject was revolutionary, therefore the subject is the printing press acting to be the object of a revolutionary idea of the condition spoken in the simple past tense active voice. Let's change that condition. The printing press has always been known as a revolutionary idea. It is implied the subject to be always and presently a revolutionary idea. Not just in the past, or just now in the present, but always now and most probably in the future as well. Prepositions, they indicate either a literal or figurative position stated into the subjecting condition. For example, through the burrowing tunnel, the miner struggled to drill any further. So there are two subjecting positions here, going through a tunnel and struggling to drill any further. Through and further indicate the presence of a preposition, which to say the presupposed condition.